You're watching World Now. We'll begin the second half in Africa, where on the 9th of August, Kenyans will be heading to the polls to pick the country's fifth president in what pundits say will be a helpfully contested election. Four candidates are competing for the country's top position. William Ruto, having served two terms as deputy president in the current government, is eager to succeed his current boss, who is feuding with. Roy Laudinga, who has unsuccessfully contested the presidency four times before, is his main challenger. He has the backing of the outgoing president, Uhuru Kenyatta, his former foe. Two other candidates, George Wajikoya and David Mwawure, uh, complete this list. Besides the presidential election, people will also go to the polls to vote in governors, uh, voting governors, members of the National Assembly, senators and members of the county assembly. Twelve people will be nominated to the National Assembly according to the Constitution to represent the special interest groups, including people with disabilities, youths and workers. Joining me on World Now to discuss the upcoming elections is a professor of international relations and strategic studies, David Awarawa. Thank you so much for joining us on the news. What do you think are the issues for Kenya that would shape the coming Tuesday's election? Thank you very much. Um, there are many of them. Um, at the forefront uh, are economic issues. Uh, at the moment, Kenya is facing uh, economic challenges like many other countries of the world, though it doesn't seem to have been affected as much as some other countries uh, since it's able to manage some between three to five uh, you know, percent uh, increase in its GDP, I mean, projected for 2022. But uh, despite that, inflation is very high. Um, poverty rate has widened, and uh, you know, people are groaning under the uh, you know, negative influence of uh, the economic downturn. Mm -hmm. Of course, not caused by internal issues, caused mainly by the COVID-19 and uh, the Russia-Ukraine war, but people feel the negative effects are all the same. So economic issues are at the forefront of, you know, uh, the election. Of course, there is also the issue of security. Kenya has been affected by, um, you know, uh, 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 terrorist activity, mainly coming from uh, Somalia and surrounding uh, uh, countries. But Kenya has been affected. By, so uh, security issues will also be at the, you know, center stage of, yeah. You know, the issue that will influence uh, how the election will go. And of course, regional cooperation will be another issue. Uh, Kenya is a major player in uh, East Africa, in fact, the leading country in East Africa. And relations with other countries, including troubled Congo, um, is also, you know, critical. It has affected the country one way or the other. Mm -hmm. So these are issues that will uh, influence, uh, you know, the election. Of course, Kenya has not been uh, known to have stability during and post-election, uh, the most uh, devastating written times is 2007 election where uh, tens of thousands were displaced and thousands were killed. Mm -hmm. And so that's why there's the apprehension that uh, it is hoped that the election will go, will be free, fair and credible so that there will be stability, you know, after the election. Well, so these are the issues that, you know, will define uh, the election next Tuesday. Well, interesting. Now, Kenya has also, you know, also had its own gains in democracy. So looking at the incumbent Uhuru Kenyatta, who remains center stage in the polls and is backing uh, leading candidate Roy Laudinga, who was his former arch rival and is running for the presidency for a record fifth term. It does appear like a two horse race, even though there are other candidates. What do you think about the two main contenders in this race? Well, um, Ray Laudinga and uh, William Ruto certainly are the, you know, two leading candidates. Uh, Ruto has been, uh, you know, the vice president to uh, Uhuru Kenyatta in the past uh, uh, decade or so now. And so he has uh, his supporters, he has his base across the country. Um, Odinga has been contested, just as you have, you have uh, you know, pointed out, Ray Laudinga has contested uh, four times, this is his fifth. Uh, the other time, he had to, you know, share government with NY Kibaki yeah. in the aftermath of that trouble election of 2007. Yeah. Uh, but the, um, there have been stability in the past uh, eight, nine years or so. Uh, and 
Yeah, Kenya is, uh, you know, touted to have made gains in demographic gains uh, since it has been largely stable uh, under the incumbent president. Um, that is what people are hoping that Kenya will be able to consolidate on the stability that they have enjoyed mm. in the past eight years or thereabouts now. Yeah. Uh, so that the election of next Tuesday will be free, fair, credible, and the post-election condition will also be stable, such that whoever wins, you know, between the two leading candidates, um, Kenya can continue to enjoy stability and uh, uh, serve as a shining light of democracy in East Africa and indeed the African continent. But certainly, uh, Odinga and Ruto are the leading candidates, and one of them. Yeah. Although Odinga is seen to have an edge, he has continued several times. He has his base. Right. And with the support of the incumbent president, it almost seems certain that we win that. Of course, Ruto cannot be, you know, just dismissed like that. So it's between Ruto and Odinga uh, mm -hmm. come next Tuesday. But what everybody prays that yeah. is that the election will be free, fair, credible, and there will be stability Absolutely. in the post-election that, That's what the African continent is actually looking for to see how it's going to turn out. And even the world will have a lot of things to talk about, you know, in the coming days on Tuesday. Thank you so much for speaking with us, Professor of International Relations and Strategic uh, Studies, David Aurao. Thank you so much. Thank you.